What's up everyone, Nelson Dellis here, and in this video we're gonna talk about three, well, four books really, that changed my life completely. You wanna know what they are? Might not be what you think. Let's get into it. So over the years, I've had an interesting journey getting to a place where I can call myself a memory champion. I mean, 10 years ago, I would have never thought that that would be the person I am today. There are plenty of books that I've read that have changed me in little bits, but I'd say these are the four that really broke me down to the heart and really inspired me in a way to do something or change something or go about something differently. So the first book here, Into Thin Air by John Krakauer is a classic. And many of you out there have read it. It was a New York Times bestseller. And basically it recounts the tragic events of the 1996 climbing season on Mount Everest. It was titillating to brush up against the enigma of mortality, to steal a glimpse across its forbidden frontier. Climbing was a magnificent activity, I firmly believed, not in spite of the inherent perils, but precisely because of them. Now for me though, that wasn't really why I wanted to read this. I was fascinated by the idea of climbing in the mountains. That was it. And I had no knowledge, I was a complete noob, I had no idea what it took or what it was about, but I knew that I liked mountains. And this was the first book that allowed me to explore that and see what the extreme end of that was. And, you know, I read this, I learned about what it takes to go on a really long mountain expedition, and then what it's like at the top of the world. I just couldn't fathom it. But I knew that after I read this, that I was onto something, and something that got within my very core told me that I needed to go climb a mountain. Maybe not this one, but some mountain. I wanted to feel that. And because of that, I think I learned valuable lessons about what it means to push yourself in difficult, painful situations. Not just in on the mountains, but in life. And to get to any goal, just to use the metaphor to the mountain, it takes one step at a time. And sometimes these steps can be slow and arduous, but if you set one small goal after the other, if you put your head down, you'll get there. Now, my second book, and a lot of you might be shocked by this because you'd expect it to be maybe a different memory book, but to be honest, this is one of the first memory books I ever picked up. Your Memory, How It Works, and How to Improve It by Kenneth Higby. Of course, it's a great memory book with all the traditional fixins, if you will, um, talking about imagery, different systems to memorize numbers, lists of words, things like that. You have probably heard the saying that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Actually, there is another saying that is probably more accurate, but is not quite as well known. The quickest way to become an old dog is to quit learning new tricks. But I remember reading it and wanting more, right? And because I wanted more, that's what led me to actually find probably the book that I would recommend the most. Uh, I actually don't have it anymore because it's a audiobook. It only existed in audio CD form, and that was Quantum Memory Power by Dominic O'Brien, eight-time world memory champion. And so because of this book, it first got me thinking about, hey, I can actually improve my memory. And because of this, I was able to get a book from a world champion that led me to compete in memory championships. Now I have a whole collection of memory books. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a separate video on my favorite memory books, and that'll be a fun one. But for now, this is really the one that got me started. Now let's get to this monster of a book. God, I love this book. Girdle, Escher, and Bach, An Eternal Golden Braid by Douglas Hofstadter. Now, and this is, this pretty much sums it up exactly what it is perfectly. A metaphorical fugue on minds and machines in the spirit of Lewis Carroll. That's perfect, doesn't that make you want to read it? Of course, I'm a Terminator. There was a time in my life I was studying physics. I was convinced I was going to go to space. I was going to be an astronaut, an astrophysicist. I was on my way to getting my PhD in physics when I came across this book. I don't know where I heard about it, don't know who showed it to me, but I found it and I was hooked. I read every single page over and over again. There was just so much in this book that resonated with me and inspired me and it was the right book at the right time because it led me to question the mind. And at, with physics, I was more questioning the world and I realized that I was more interested in what was happening in here 
And so this led me to switch my studies completely to computer science. Douglas Hofstetter was a computer scientist and he was deep into artificial intelligence. And he was really, really clever in how he thought about how the mind works and how to replicate it in machines. I just love it. It weaves together music, math, science, the mind, all into one incredible fat book. And in between each chapters, uh, there's kind of a little dialogue that really feels like you're in an Alice in Wonderland story. And I loved those. Those just got me thinking so deeply about what was possible with the mind. And I honestly attribute a lot of my success in the mental world to this book. This is kind of where it started. I don't think I would have read my other memory books had it not been for this one. It's beautiful. Now, last but not least, my fourth book, believe it or not, is not Moonwalking with Einstein. Huh? A lot of memory peeps out there claim this to be their first book that got them into the world of memory sports, but not me. I am an old man, and this book actually did not exist when I started. It took about three years of me competing before this book came out, so this actually didn't mean anything to me. But no, so my fourth book, and this is kind of hard and embarrassing to say, and I actually don't have the book anymore. I don't know where it is. The book is called The Game. I'm not afraid to say it, but a bit ashamed, but I bought it at a time in my life when I was trying to meet people and have, I've always had a hard time talking to people, believe it or not, as easy as you think this is. Um, it's a lot easier for me to talk to a camera or even to an audience of 3,000 people where I can't see specific people than it is for me to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or a conversation with uh, a girl at a bar. I was having lunch with this guy, a friend of mine, and I recommended Moonwalk with Einstein. I said it would change his life. And he said, well, I have a book for you. Let's trade books. So we went to the bookstore. I bought him that one. He bought me this book, The Game. So The Game is written by Neil Strauss, and it's about him, kind of an awkward writer, infiltrating the world of uh, pickup artists. Yeah. And uh, learning the ways and kind of getting better at mastering himself in front of the other sex. A lot of what I found in that book, forget about meeting women, it was more about the psychology of people and interactions between people and what makes people tick so that you can kind of work towards that in a conversation. In life, people tend to wait for good things to come to them. And by waiting, they miss out. Usually what you wish for doesn't fall in your lap. It falls somewhere nearby and you have to recognize it. Stand up and put in the time and work it takes to get to it. This isn't because the universe is cruel, it's because the universe is smart. It has its own cat string theory and knows we don't appreciate things that fall into our laps. I remember, you know, I was already in the memory world, but then it kind of gave me a lot of confidence out on the speaking circuit when I would do speeches, when I would learn people's names and have to memorize them. You know, I had such anxiety going up to people and having conversations with them. This book laid it on the floor and really gave me some tools and ideas to be able to get over that hump. I think it's a great book to read whether you're a man or a woman or neither. There's some really valuable tips in there. You can kind of get over the fact that it's about picking up women. Um, I think there's a lot of takeaways uh, outside of that. That's good. That's damn good. All right guys, that's all I got for you today. Just wanted to go over a few of my really favorite books that mean a lot to me, and I hope that helps you. You don't have to read them, just know that that's kind of where I come from. And uh, if you'd like to pick them up, I highly suggest them. They're great reads, you'll get a lot out of them. I'd love to know which books inspired you or changed your life. Please write those in the description. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.